Welcome to another episode of The Candid Savage. I'm your host, Ashley Mitzier, and today we have a very interesting guest. All my guests are interesting because I like to be unique. This one is L.A. Jean-Baptiste. He's an author, highly sought-after business consultant, life coach, senior advisor. He's a medium, intuitive strategist. He's licensed in NLP, which stands for Neuro Linguistics Programming, with over 20 years of experience. And I wanted to bring him on because I'm a firm believer in something called the law of attraction. And since I guess be my late teens, I've been projecting what I want in my life, more so at the age of 27. That's where I made my life change, which those of you that have followed me know a little bit more of my story. So for myself, manifesting what I want, putting out what I want, but also obviously living a positive life and not being a dick helps a lot. So I'm a firm believer in what you put out is what you receive. And there's no one better than LA to bring on here to talk about this. So welcome to the podcast, LA. Thank you very much, Ashley. It's a pleasure <laughs> being here. And I love the way you talk. <laughs> I'm just looking forward. <laughs> Say it like it is. Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us a little bit about yourself so uh, listeners can, or now viewers can uh, get to know you. Well, I've been doing, as you said, um, NLP and coaching for about over 20, 25 years now. I've also developed intuitive abilities along the way and um, mediumship, which is the ability to talk to people on the other side. Uh, I usually mostly use all my intuitive abilities for people, mostly in business or relationship coaching to enable me and them to find out, you know, what's the root cause of something. In business, it's mostly, you know, in terms of deal making, uh, negotiations, knowing what's coming, what to be more careful about. So, uh, you know, increasing risk management so people can, you know, if somebody starts out a business or is going to, if I was just thinking my client, uh, <clears throat> which I'm here in his office right now, he just let me his office because I thought I'm not going to make it <laughs> my office. So I'm just going to borrow somebody else's office. So, you know, you. a lot of manifestation. <laughs> <right there>. um, <clears throat> so, you know, this person was about to buy a restaurant. And, uh, you know, they'll ask me, what do you think? What do you see? And then like, no, it's not going to happen. There's something, there's a person is, I'm not going to go into the detail, yeah, but yeah, yeah. you know, this person is, there's some things he's not telling you, or this is what you should be really looking at. So he crunched the numbers, did it. And eventually, you know, didn't buy it. And eventually those restaurants closed down actually. Wow. So it looked all good and nice, but you know, when you are able to see certain things, especially, uh, be able to read the other person. Uh, the competitor or, you know, in this, uh, in this a partner. So a lot of people will hire me to do that. Lawyers will hire me sometimes to help them with their cases, to hmm. give them a different angle that they might not be seeing or missing information or, you know, clients, if, if, if they should go, like a friend of mine, she was going to start a class action lawsuit, didn't see it going anywhere. So then I asked her a couple of questions and through my questions, I could see that, you know, that's why I'm seeing this not going to happen. It's, it's not an advantage. She's not going to win. Hmm. Okay. So <clears throat> in terms of that sensing, I think that would be the value that I add to people and my ability to train people to do that. Uh, I have a couple of my clients, you know, that run successful businesses themselves. Now they were students of mine. They started out on their own afterwards and now have successful practices, uh, probably in the, you know, six figure income range or something sales range. Mm -hmm. So the idea is, the time is now for that type of stuff. The more and more we're starting to see how the brain uses intuition and how we have more than five senses. And through those other senses, we're able to perceive information that, you know, we can perceive before our brain knew it's there. You know, people call it, I have this gut instinct. Yeah. Gut instinct. You can't, you call it gut instinct because it feels something, but your, your brain does not recognize the information and process it. Mm -hmm. When you're able to process it, then it becomes really clear mm -hmm. stay away you know because if you don't then you know sometimes my client will say no you know i felt like doing it anyways <clears throat> okay well there goes a hundred thousand dollar price tag on your little i'll do it anyways so, that's unfortunate you know but you know if you don't mind losing a couple of, it's not that i'm god you know <clears throat> yeah but you might want to you know if you go see a lawyer and he tells you or a doctor says you know you might not want to do that because this will lead to that normally 
you should probably listen. It. Yeah, I, I, for myself, if my doctor tells me something, I'll, you know, I'll probably do it. So exactly. Yeah. yeah. So I know for you, because you had a practice before when you, because I know a little bit about your story from um, the group thing that we did mm-hmm. a few months back. Yeah. Can you kind of tell people a little bit about that, how you started recognizing that you already kind of knew your client before you even met your client? Sure. So I started when I was 23. At the time, I had taken NLP courses. You know, people didn't know what that was, neuro-linguistic programming. Now more and more people know it because of Tony Robbins, Richard Bandler. fascinating. And, you know, anybody in sales that tells me they don't know NLP, I would say, well, you might want to, you know, if you fix a a car or do (laughs) surgery, you might read an anatomy book or, you know book on parts um, <laughs> so, you know so what happened is that I was in my office and uh, I kept I had a lot of clients coming in and at one point I just go into trance and listen to them and at one point this client I start seeing over her head like a movie and the movie is about her inside the operating room when she got her child so I interrupted her I said I'm sorry I said did you give birth at the hospital she said yeah I said were there this many people there she said yeah I said, well, you know, I see it was your husband present. She says, yes. I said, well, I don't know. There's something happening. And all of a sudden, it, you just turn dark and things turn dark. And what happened is that, yeah, I know. I love <laughs> when, it. <laughs> so when the child was born, you know, they gave it to the husband. And his brilliance, all his brilliance, he said, wow, that's the most ugliest thing I've ever seen so she had came to see me to find out why she didn't care about the guy anymore. After nine years, she could just couldn't stand him. And I pinpointed to that. And she says, oh, my God, how do you know that? I said, I don't know. I just see this movie on top of your head. You know, <laughs> It's like a movie, but there's no popcorn. I'll always remember saying that. <laughs> and so afterwards, she said, you know, are you a medium? I said, well, I don't know. You know. And then she starts telling me, you know, your name means he who announces the good news, Alain Jean-Baptiste. Uh, Jean-Baptiste. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, okay, that's cool. Yeah, okay, nice. And I left <laughs> it at that. Thought, wow, man, what if I could do that all the time? Yeah. So I decided, I'm going to go see some psychics, ask some questions, right? So I started noticing how they move their eyes, how they would answer questions, yes. how they would look at me, their non-physiology. And then I created, it took me a long time, to be honest, uh, probably about 10 years. Because yeah. I went from courses to courses and, you know, inputted more stuff. And I developed the course in which, you know, people develop uh, 12 cents. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you think of Ingo Swan, who's the father of remote viewing, uh, for people that don't know what that is, it's, it came from the Stargate program, which is the CIA uh, put a funding of $20 million because they thought they were behind the, the Russians who spent a lot of money on that stuff mm-hmm. uh, to develop psychic soldiers. So he postulated that there's at least more than 17 or even more than that, except they usually call it fancy term like magneto, proprieto, whatever. Yeah. You just keep it simple, you know? (laughs) I love that stuff. And I, for me, kind of similar, I would, I actually thought I was going batshit crazy (laughs) when I was about 20. Those are side effects of actually being in our head. Right. (laughs) Yeah. But then I found normal. Trust me. Like you, you were saying like a, a movie playing on the top of their head. Yeah. For me, I call it my um, invisible LCD TV. Mm-hmm. And, um, and it's funny you mentioned about you were watching them, how the way they look, their yeah. body language, all that kind of stuff. And like people that know me know that when shit starts happening with me, like Holly, she'll notice if I start looking off to the right. Yeah. Like, what the fuck are you seeing? I'm like, eh. Correct. And, so those are accessing cues. Those are yes. where you get that transmission from. So I was watching a, a show this weekend. My mom said, hey, I taped something for you uh, with Einstein and all those geniuses. I said, oh, cool, perfect. I love studying geniuses. If you look at Tesla, Albert Einstein, Steve Jobs, Bill Gates, Elon Musk. You know, Elon Musk is Einstein, amazing. Mozart, you know. They all have one thing in common they all use what's called the sense of imagination, not just imagine, but the sense of imagination. So they're able to go inside a place in their mind and access information. And it was funny because that show asked, you know, can these people have communicated with aliens that gave them that information? And I thought, wow, that's pretty cool. (laughs) Aliens now, who knows? So they all access it. So whenever myself, and I have a friend, Danny in Montreal, a friend of mine, he's psychic, you know, He'll look off and then he's in his, he's in, he's in his zone. 
So that's when you know that somebody will access it. Uh, one of my students, same thing, uh, up to the right. Another student of mine, uh, one of my previous girlfriend, um, actually that I taught how to do this, she's a nurse, she'll go like this. Mm. She'll go down to the right, okay? And if she goes anywhere else, it just doesn't come to her. It's just yeah. down there and it's the feeling for her. For some of my clients, they'll look, uh, you know, right here. So for me, I look to the right sometimes. Or I'll go like this. Like some people, my clients, yeah. they, they know me. So I see I'll just hold my hand and I'll go, whoa, whoa. Because <laughs> for me, I sense a presence here talking. Yeah. So sometimes they talk and I'm, somebody's talking and say, okay, okay, just a minute. And people look at me and like, okay. You know, there's nobody there, right? I've actually witnessed this. So if you I guys know. are like, I have no idea what the fuck he's talking about. It's a legit thing and it's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm lucky. I remember this guy who used to come from Montreal in his motorcycle, that Ducati motorcycle, came to see me a couple of times a year. And he's like, one day he's like, did you ever think how people see you whenever they're <laughs> looking at you and you're doing it? I said, no, wait a minute. I thought, you know, I'll change position. I'm like, oh yeah, that doesn't look a bit weird. <laughs> I can't, I can't, I, I just can't stop because it's, it's there as you're there. Yeah. It's, it's real. The thing is, our, if we go back to the basics, you know, the law of attraction, the law of manifestation, they all have to do with one thing, which is frequency of vibration. Everything yes. is made of frequency, right? Waves, uh, particles. So our brain, uh, you know, I, I spoke to you a couple of minutes ago about Dr. Michael Persinger, who's one of the lead scientists on neuroscientists on this stuff. Yeah. And I remember talking to him like over 20 years ago and he asked me, you know, did you think about uh, the number of Hertz? I'm thinking, what the hell does that mean? I just <laughs> I thought that. No, I went to see the top neuroscientist. <laughs> I knew nothing that I knew a little bit about the brain, but I'm like, this guy's asking me questions. I didn't even know that where the brain works in Hertz, which is like the basics is like, you know, humans use language. I'm like, okay. <laughs> so I read about it so bad because I felt so embarrassed, right? He was really nice. He didn't say anything. I, from there, I realized, wait a minute, this is like a radio. You tune in stuff, right? So if you think of our senses, let's go through them. You know, like your eyes will see a certain range of frequency. Uh, you know, I can't see an infrared, but I know that if I press a button, it'll change the TV mm -hmm. uh, channel, right? Uh, I don't see, you know, like night vision, but you'll have those goggles and stuff like that. So our senses are the same thing. I think we we assume for so much for so long that we have five senses. Nobody ever questioned it, but there's no scientific study that proves that we only have five senses, which is something, you know, if you want to look it up, but if you use other senses, there's certain things that you'll be able to see or other people will be able to see or be able to tune into. Mm -hmm. so the law of attraction does exactly that is that your mind using your beliefs, your attitude, choices, decisions, and feelings and thoughts, creates a world in itself and then what happens is that your brain with the frequencies you know if we want to keep this really basic here <clears throat> creates a, sin, uh, a symphony or a sin, it synthesizes synthesizes mm -hmm. sorry <clears throat> Synth <clears throat> i'm losing my voice the frequency of it you know you'll attract okay so if you're always pessimist you'll see things a certain way if you're yeah. optimistic you'll see things a different way you know, if you think about people that have a lot of money or people that, you know, whatever happens in business, you know, I was talking to a friend of mine a while ago. I said, well, I remember when I was, you know, up 19 millions in debt, I said, wow. oh, I view it as down or under 19 million. He views it as up. So mm -hmm. even there, the way he perceives it is different than the one I perceived it. Yeah. Never presented him from buying whatever he wanted either. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So some people they'll have, you know, half a million dollars, but they don't do anything with it. Why? Because their beliefs is that, you know, I might not have it some later or I'm afraid or this or that, you know? Um, so they attract those things and unfortunately they respond to them. So the higher the probability, the higher the possibility thinking, the higher the probability that what you want will manifest. Yeah. I, I completely agree with that. And so back when I was 27, um, when I left my career, I didn't exactly know what I wanted, but I know I wanted to just like be up here for what? No fucking clue. And then I started going and, and doing what I loved, which was fitness and health. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I started, I was like, I kind of looked around this big club that I was in and I'm like, I want my own and I want a lot of them. Mm -hmm. 
And then I would tell this to some people and they're like, that's a lot of money. Like, let's be serious. Like you can't do that. And I'm like, (laughs) fuck you. (laughs) I'm going to do it. So then I went into my own studio and I started learning like the entrepreneurial curves. But two years I was in that studio was putting out saying when I'm 50, I don't want to be doing this. I want to have something stable. I want my own gyms. I want them. Yeah. And I want to be able to speak and I want people to look at me as a mentor of, you know, you can do what you put your mind to. Correct. Law of attraction. Mm-hmm. And um, so now I'm here at 33, franchise owner of three territories for Anytime Fitness. And I'm speaking to people. I've written a book. I've, I've put it out there that I want to do more. Mm-hmm. And the last six months that I've been like batshit crazy on what I want, mm-hmm. it's been coming in like a floodgate. Correct. So if you look at yourself non-verbally now, you're going like this. This is flooding in. So what happens is that your belief system allowed those gates to open. Mm -hmm. And the the real difference is you didn't limit it to the belief of money. Now, a lot of people do that. Okay. They'll say, well, I can't do this because, you know, I don't have any money. Yep. And I remember when I bought, I always bought properties with no money down because I just thought it would be insulting to buy it with money down. So, you know, it's a thing. You know, I did that. I swear. I went to Walt. I was with, in Walt Disney. So I see this TV. I'm watching TV on the bed, right? <clears throat> Carlton Sheen. I'm like, wow, that looks cool. No money down. Buy all this. Buy all that. I'm like, wow. Pick up the phone. I call it. When I get to Canada, it comes. I read it like halfway through, not the whole thing. I said, I'm going to do that. Call a couple of my clients. I said, listen, could you build this for me? Yeah. I said, how much would I need? He says, well, we know people that, you know, could help the financing and stuff like, okay, perfect. I said, I don't want it. I'm doing it, but I don't want to pay a penny. It has to be no money down or I'm not doing it. Okay. So I had a design kick ass, man. <laughs> <laughs> I had a design to my specification and you know, my God. <laughs> okay. And then I had people investing in it and then I sold it at, at a huge profit. Okay. Holy Actually, God. I think it's the second most expensive triplex. And Gatineau at the time when I sold it. Nice. <laughs> Why? Because I put it out there. I, yeah. I guarantee I, the, <clears throat> it took a long time for me to decide to choose it. So my spouse at the time, she, she found the person. She says, listen, when you meet him, you have to be ready. If you're not ready, he's not even going to listen to you. So the guy comes, he has all these things to sell it, right? This is the, how much, da, da, da. I look at it and I say, oh, I said, I guess you spoke to my spouse. You're ready. That's good. <laughs> I said, listen. <clears throat> this is what I want. I want this amount. Okay. And I'm going to be very disappointed if it's not sold on this specific date. (laughs) It was sold on that date. Immediately on that date. Boom. The guy came in. I said, he's buying it. How do you know that? Don't say that. You'll jinx it. No, no, I'm telling you. This guy by the end of the day is putting an offer. That's it. It's done. (laughs) Okay. I like it. That's like my buddy, Eric. We're like brother and sister. We've known each other since grade seven. Mm -hmm. And we love cars. Like you can probably see by my backdrop. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> Love. It's my thing. I never played with Barbies. There's always cars. And for years and years and years, people would always be like, why do you go and look at these expensive cars and go into dealerships? And like, you can't afford it. So why are you doing it? Yeah. Um, why do you do window shopping? I know right? some people, I can't go because I don't want to do window shopping. I'm like, no, go do window shopping. Then <laughs> you know what to get. Then you'll go get it. Yeah. So for years we've been doing this and I remember going into Camco Acura and there's a little fucking advertisement for you. (laughs) Um, (laughs) So I remember going in there, just quit my career, have no money, nothing because I lost everything on purpose because I'm that smart. (laughs) And I go into the showroom. I already have the car that I love, but I know that I'm going to want to upgrade. So I sit in this white accurate TL fully loaded with like this um, kind of like orangey brown leather. Yeah. And I'm like, I fucking want it. But I just quit my career. So I can't, I can't have it, but I would go and sit in it or I would go to um, dealerships and sit in expensive exotic cars. Yeah. And I'm like, this is going to be mine. And I, I love cars. So sometimes I just go into dealerships and it's funny how the years of doing that same with Eric the things have happened to allow us to get things. So Eric, for instance, has always wanted, because we love the design of vehicles. 
And for years, he's always wanted kind of like a high-end sports car. Mm -hmm. He just bought himself a four series coupe from BMW. Mm -hmm. thing, like, I'm not a huge BMW fan, but it is beautiful. And all the years of him saying that he's wanted this, he's finally been able to have it. And some people are like, how do you guys do this? I'm like, we just work hard and we put it out there and it, like it comes to us and people think I'm fucking nuts. Well, you have to start with the dream and the most important thing. And I remember when I was starting all this coaching thing and Lee Brown, he said, you have to think it's possible. You have to believe mm -hmm. that it's possible. I have my client just across a friend of mine across me from this office right now here. And, uh, you know, he asked me, when am I going to get my Ferrari? And at the time I'm like, okay, I see it in about two years. Yeah. Comes the two years. He calls me. He says, you want to come with me? We're going to go get the Ferrari. I said, okay, cool. Where? What kind? Uh, spider something. Spider. I can ask him. Spider. It's really Last nice. Later. Go, on my, go, on go on my Facebook. You're going to see. Uh, that's not a good car? No? Oh, psh. oh, I did see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's there. I was riding it last summer. You lent it to me. F430. There you go. I may have creeped. Is that good? <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. So he says, okay, let's go get the Ferrari. We're going in my private jet. I'm like, okay, let's go. <laughs> that was my. Okay. I always wanted to be in a private. I swear, private jets is the way to go, man. It's the bomb. Oh, yes. They're it's very nice. But you know what? If you awesome. like cars, you like Ferrari? Uh, <laughs> I can't see, but okay. You like <laughs> yeah. Porsche? I'm on the fence, but yes. Okay. He has a really nice one. I'm going to ask him, and this summer I'll bring you. Yes. I'm going to write it down. There uh, we go. Porsche and Ferrari. Yeah, he lent it to me for like three, four days last, last summer because uh, the Ferrari festival called and said, you know, can you, can you come with your Ferrari? And he couldn't. So he says, I'll know somebody. I'll go. He calls me go. up and says, you want to go? I said, uh, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm free. Yeah, I'll go. Sounds good. I'll go. Nice. It was fun. I liked it. I gave yeah. little kids like tours. They loved it. I think yeah. that was the most important for me. Because for me, cars, I'm, I'm not like you. You know, you love them and stuff. I think mean, they're just like nice. Thank you. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's good. I'm going to have Ferrari. Uh, just, there we go. This summer. <laughs> See? Just has to, just has to ask. So so, my thing is the F12. There's only two places in that car, I think, though. So, yeah, we'll no. just go run. We'll have fun. Okay. The F12 is on my list of to do. Okay. And I saw one of those this summer. They're very nice. Very, very so nice. Fast. They're far. They're uh, strong. They're, the they're one of the fastest powerful. ones. Yeah. So <laughs> you see, in terms of that, uh, even, you know, my friend at the time, when he thought about it, you know, I looked in the future, I saw it, but it didn't register to me. It was just like, okay, sure. Yeah. And when it came that moment, it was very, very emotional for him because, you know, some people think, you know, those people have a lot of money. They can buy whatever yeah. they want, but, you know, oh, well, you know, he has money. You know what? This person worked his ass off for yep. years and years and he finally got it. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's, that's with anything. Like when I'm able to kind of like hit a milestone and do something for myself, like some people have like negative opinions towards that individual, but you know, when you work so hard and you're able to do something that awesome for yourself, I mean, you know why what? not? It's their dream. And that's what people have to remember. It's your dream, what you want. Yep. You know, when you stop your job and you felt, I want to do something that I want, a lot of people can't do that because yep. they're so afraid, even if they have hundreds of thousand dollars, they're so afraid they won't have any money, they won't mm -hmm. make it. <clears throat> they prefer slavering over a job instead of you know, going for their dream. And <clears throat> so it's very important for the law of manifestation or attraction to use self-confidence and self-esteem mm -hmm. to recognize your own self-worth, right? Yep. There's a difference between your self-worth as a human being and one of a balance sheet. You yep. know what I mean? And for some people, like for me, I'll probably never have a Ferrari because it's not important to me. I have yeah. access to one. So <clears throat> in terms of, you know, success, having access to resources is part of success, right? Yep. So if I wanted one or borrow one for the weekend, probably, you know, I could do that or I could do this. <clears throat> but for some people, you know, they really want it. The first thing you need to do is you need to write it down. As long as you say it's in my head, oh, don't worry about it. Scientific, science proves that if you write it down, it's even better for you because it uses more parts of your brain, right? Yeah. You live the moment, you experience it, and then you sense when about you're going to get it. You know, this weekend, I had some time by myself. Uh, my son was at his grandma. So I went to a piano bar here. Oh, nice. I used to do at the Brook Street Hotel. There's another ad for you. <laughs> <laughs> and so, 
you know, I thought, wow, what am I going to do? I'm going to listen to this music. I wrote another list of 287 dreams, I think, because I only stayed for an hour and a half. I'm like, Phew. Because I tell my students, you know, my coaches, I said, okay, you know, you have to start with 100. My 100? I don't care about the dreams they say. You know what I look for? I look for how they think about those dreams. It could be something really cheap, something big. It's how you think about it. Mm -hmm. and then you write it out. And then I look at, you know, what's the beliefs preventing this person from getting it? I don't have enough money. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, why not use other people's money? I know people that had no money and then made 5,000 in one month doing uh, crowdfunding or those things on uh, the internet, yep. like Indiegogo or this or that. Or, and I've seen some inventions that have made, like were able to gather millions in no time. Yeah. So now we have the internet, you know, the power is more within the individual now. I remember going to see um, Bill Clinton in Montreal. He says, you know, you have the power now. Before it used to be governments and this and that, and they do have some power but it's the power of the individual to make a difference now, not just, you know, governments and, you know, powerful people and stuff like that. I mean, mm -hmm. you could start an app now and, you know, go into the billions in no time. I mean, Facebook, look how it started. Yep. Snapchat, Twitter, you know, things I can't even pronounce making mm -hmm. billions. Okay. For what? It's a piece of paper. You yeah. Know? Everybody believes in the fantasy. So everybody plays the fantasy, right? Yeah. There was um, there's something pretty cool I listened to on the um, MFCEO project. It's Andy Frisella. He's the CEO of First Form. Mm -hmm. And he brought on a couple guys and they were talking about something similar to this. And one of the guys on there, um, he studied quantum physics. One mm -hmm. of the cool stories that he was talking about was this experiment they did was with a Petri dish. Yes. And they took a swab of this guy in his mouth, put it in the Petri dish, kept it in one room, walked him to the other end of the building, put him in a room with an emotional um, movie. Mm -hmm. And when he got emotional in the room, the Petri dish, the DNA of the Petri dish, the energy of it changed. Correct. Yeah. So I fucking cool. Research. Yeah. Right? There's one about yogurt, same thing. Okay. So quantum physics says that if there's one atom vibrating all the way at the end of the universe, the other one would vibrate the same thing. Crazy. It's about the same thing. So again, this has to do with the, the way we think. And the problem where the, see, this is very good that you mentioned that because the difficulty people have is that they think in terms of linearly. Mm -hmm. you, know, you go to high school, you go to college, you go to university, you get this job. And sometimes you don't keep that job anymore. It's true. You're like, okay, what am I going to do? <laughs> when I going to start my own thing? How come yeah. immigrants can come here? You know, I get people sometimes telling me, oh, well, you know, you guys are Canadian. There's so much opportunity for you. You should, you should be more. I'm like, okay, well, okay. We're trying to be the best that we can be. It's not an army commercial, by the way. <laughs> you know, but the difference between sometimes when an immigrant is that you have that survival instinct. You know, you yeah. want to make it happen. And our beliefs here in Canada are more in terms, uh, you know, the entrepreneurship is not as, it's perceived differently than in the U.S. Okay? Very much. A joke, a friend of mine, he, he owns a, a dealership here. And we're, we're mentors all at a, um, the mentorship program here in Gatineau before we, I used to be part of. And, he's, and he, he said something so smart. He said, you know what? In Gatineau, you have a Mercedes or a nice car. You put it in the driveway. You come in late so nobody sees it and you keep it in the garage. So nobody says anything. In Ontario, which is across the bridge, right? Yeah. You bring it, you get early, go there, and the neighbor will say, hey, good, congratulations, you know, how did you do it? And I'm thinking, wow, this is pretty, it's pretty true, you know? <laughs> Same thing with the U.S., uh, you know? I have different clients in the U.S. and, you know, some across the world, and you can see the very way people think about creating success and, and about money, but mm -hmm. a lot of it has to do with beliefs about money. So an exercise, you know, you can do with your audience is, uh, you know, write down what are your limiting beliefs about money. Okay. I can't do this. I can't do that. You know, at one point I wanted to buy a property and I'm like, I can't get it through my head. There's something I'm missing. I said, I, I see I'm getting it, but I'm missing a component. So my friend says, well, you know, you do this, this, and then you have somebody like me co-signing or giving you an amount that you're missing. Mm. Uh, oh, okay. My brain was in like, like it, he tilted my brain. I thought, <laughs> oh. Okay. I didn't think about that one, but okay. Thank you very much. Problem was solved. <laughs> <laughs> Who 
okay, I, I will. Never, you know, I'll give you, I'll sign, I'll give you the money. I'm like, okay, uh, <laughs> all right. What's why the was, catch? Why was so complicated for her? Okay, but true, when I, I swear, whenever I got properties before, people would say, you can't do that. No, no, it's impossible. I remember when I worked at the hospital, they trained me to do autopsies, right? I would tell, mm -hmm. I was like maybe 17, 18. I would tell, you know, my, my, uh, my classmates, well, no, I'm working this weekend. You know, they're showing me how to do up. Can't do that. You're not a doctor. But there's specific things doctors do and certain specific things doctors don't do. I mean, they're not going to spend two, three hours, you know, uh, doing the autopsy. Don't you know, look at the cause of that. But, you know, the physical part is pretty intense, right? Yeah. So over the years for myself as a child, I've, you know, even adolescent, I was always told you can't do this, you can't do that. And the main thing I would have your audience learn, the one key word, you know, if you look at everybody that's successful, the one thing they have in common is they take more risk than other people. Mm -hmm. But the one key ingredient that they have is not just optimism. It's called courage. And courage is the ability to believe in your talent or go for your talent, your skills, and even though you don't know the, the answer or you may get it wrong, you're still going at it. Even mm -hmm. if you fall down, you get up. Yeah. Even if you got it right or wrong the first time, you either learn from it or you fall down and you get up again. Yeah. It's about using your talent and your skills and to believe in yourself, which is self-confidence, right? Yeah. That's what people need. You know, if they want to create something, manifest something, look at what's the belief. Why don't I have it now? Okay. Why don't I have it? 12 story high rise mm. by it tomorrow morning. Uh, because to me right now, I'm being stressed just thinking about it because there's so many people in it. It sounds like trouble. Yeah. I remember, you know, when I was a kid, one of my friends, my age, about in his twenties, his dad helped him in real estate and he had a lot of real estate. And I said, ah, you know what? I don't want to deal with real estate because I don't want to clean any toilets. He says, Alain, seriously, how long have I been doing this? I said, well, you know, 10, 12 years. Did you ever hear me complain about fixing a toilet? I said, no, actually, no. I said, wait a minute, let me, let me think how you're thinking right now. How do you see real estate? He said, oh, me. I imagine there's curtains in the windows. I said, why do you need curtains in the windows? He said, that means they're rented out. Well, I never thought about that. Yeah, I want curtains too, man. What color are you putting? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but for me, I imagine people are going to create problems. They're not, you know, they're not going to pay. You're going to have to go to that HG or whatever. I'm thinking, wow, this is not a good way to think. I should be thinking like him. I'm going to make money. People are going to pay. It's going to pay for itself. Okay, I'll cut the grass. Who cares? I'll hire somebody for the grass. Yeah. Okay. You know what I mean? So whenever you imagine something, if you put a blockage there, immediately you're going to react to it. And unfortunately, you know, you can create your own prison because it's your mind. So you always have to keep possibilities in mind. That's why I, co I um, called my company like that is that you have to think, okay, what am I not seeing? And if I have this problem, who can I go ask that can help me solve that problem? Mm -hmm. If it's an accounting problem or a numbers problem, a uh, an accountant. If it's this or that, a lawyer. If it's uh, you know medical, a doctor. If whatever it could be, it could be a coach, therapist, could be your neighbor for, for all that's important, okay? But the idea is to write down, okay, this is what I'm thinking. Why am I this way right now? And what do I need to change that belief to make it happen? If I had never bought that thing online uh, while I was in Walt Disney, I probably would have never, you know, risked it. I thought, mm -hmm. hey, cool, man, let's do it. I want to yeah. do it just because I want to show that it could be done. That's all I care for. <laughs> like, because, you know, then building it and all that, that takes a lot, you know, yeah. a lot, but at least you have something, right? Absolutely. But in any right. case, whether it's your car, whether it's manifesting, you know, a phone or you know, kids going to college or, you know, diamonds for your girlfriend, you know, anything of that sort, you have to imagine, okay, how can I get this done? Okay. I had a friend just recently, he bought a whole lot of equipment. Okay. He had no money and then he figured out a way to get it and now he's getting it. I'm like, wow, that's, that's so cool. <laughs> that's okay. pretty much how shit goes down when you're starting on your own. You just exactly. figure out a way to make it happen. Exactly. And I said, oh, so when are you getting the equipment? His face lit up Friday. I'm like, okay, <laughs> you know, calm down, man. Just calm. You're scaring me right now. You don't want to keep quiet. <laughs> it's kind of like me right now with one of the things I'm, I'm doing like a startup right now. 
Yeah. And with Holly, and there's a couple times where that has happened. We're like, when's it happening? Okay. Or exactly. when's it coming in? Okay. Like it's. And if you can tune into the future of that frequency, then that confidence will attract everything else. So oh, yeah. one thing that I do with my clients is I look in the future and I say, okay, this is coming. What do you need to think or start thinking to be able to allow this in? Mm -hmm. A lot of people are afraid of success. Why? Because you have no more excuses when you're successful. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'd love to lend you money because you, you really need help. But, you know, I don't want to lose the two, three hundred thousand dollars that I just put aside. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. It doesn't sound too good as a, you know, I don't, I, I don't have any money. Man, I'm broke. I can't lend you none. Yeah. It's, you know, it's not the same thing, right? So for some people, when they have success, some of them think, you know, everybody's going to be asking me for, for money. This is going to happen. Oh, it's going to be difficult. You know, mm -hmm. just like I said, for the real estate part, instead mm -hmm. of thinking, okay, well, when this comes up, then I'll deal with it. When this comes up, then I'll deal with it. Mm -hmm. What if I didn't have any more, you know, monetary problem? How would I talk to other people? Okay. Who, what, what would I manifest differently? Yeah. For some people, this is too much. Why? Because they want to live in their comfort zone. Yeah. Live in they the box. Complaining. Man, how are you going to complain with all that money? <laughs> <laughs> Stay humble, I'm so people. Sorry. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm leaving. Uh, can you start the jet, please? <laughs> I have to go. I, I have to go to this resort, Bora Bora or whatever. Bora Bora, my private it's so, island. It's, my, yeah. It's, it's, so, it's too hard for me right now. You know, it doesn't. You could you could do that, but I'm not going to listen to you. I'm exactly. going to say, oh, you know, keep yourself Stop bitching. Yeah, exactly. Okay, but you know, those are possibilities. So, so how do people get to see your books and get to get in touch with you? Uh, and they can call me eight one nine three two eight nine four seven three, or go on my website alainjambetsis dot com, uh, where you'll be able to uh, just go there, contact us, or by email. Uh, which is also the information is right there. The best way now actually is through Facebook. I have so many people just messaging me and I'm like, click, click, click. Oh, that's cool. Okay. There appointment, appointment, appointment. So Facebook, I would say is probably one of the easiest ones. Mm -hmm. um, they can also, so uh, our show, um, YouTube, we're making more and more videos on YouTube right now. Uh, so I probably ask you to come on one of our videos actually. There we go. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> I'll make sure to put all your info on the bottom of the info thing for a podcast. Yeah. So I'll Perfect. have everything on there for everyone. Okay. For those of you that are struggling with, as my tagline says, get shit done. If you guys are having issues with that, I uh, highly suggest you check out LA stuff. Um, even inbox me if you're having some issues, maybe if you have questions about how I made a change, feel free to tap in and ask. I'll add, as I said before, all of LA's stuff on the bottom of the info of this podcast. And tune into his YouTube because there is one video you actually showed me last week about the woman who had stage fright. Yes. He like cured her stage fright in like 12 minutes. <laughs> Technically less than 12 minutes, but it was hilarious because you also use humor, which is good. Exactly. Oh, I always <laughs> use humor just to throw so people good. off. So good. Like, oh, okay, and then I just go back at it. We're just putting another one in which actually... Uh, this person was afraid of making a change. I think it's under 10 minutes. Brad, really nice guy. This was for my, my um, training in Vancouver, uh, um, a special course I designed for a client of mine uh, who had an elite membership coaching platinum membership program. It was on influence and persuasion. Mm -hmm. So it was how to help uh, people influence and persuade them to when they have to go see investors and are asking for a lot of money, right? It's just... Oh, can you just give me 10,000 or, you know, 1.5 million? <laughs> Take it uh, out of my back you know, pocket. Here exactly. you go. Exactly. You know, here, here's the check. Call me. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that one. Um, but yeah, we're going to create more. Uh, also, you know, if you have any insights, you know, I'd be glad to just make the videos from what you're saying. So there's a lot Perfect. of techniques that can, people can do because the most important thing people need to know and I want to, 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 to emphasize on this is that you can use your mind to be what it is, which is the most powerful thing in the universe. Mm -hmm. And I'm not just saying that as a tagline. Everything comes from there. If you think of Einstein theory of relativity, if you think of our cars, if you think of, you know, the computer, I'm on the Mac right now. When I was a kid, you know, Macs were like, you don't touch that. And now yeah. look, there's more Macs than it's one of the biggest companies in the world. Mm -hmm. Okay. Why? 
the guy just changed the way he was thinking. Okay. Bill Gates, same thing. You know, he was doing Microsoft. Now he's changing the world by helping um, uh, the uh, rate of death go down in Africa, you know, through all their programs of clinics and HIV. And, you know, now he wants to do something for polio. So people have to start thinking more creatively and become aware of how you think and then change the way you think. Mm-hmm. Because this is the most important. It's not just the why, it's the how, you know. This summer, I lost over 30 pounds last summer. And uh, good for you. I didn't, I didn't, I, that wasn't a plan. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but after that, I'm like, hey, this is possible, you know. Now I'm yeah. getting back, you know. But, uh, you know, my doctor said, you know, um, change the way you're eating. And they did ketogenic. And, you know, I hear people, you know, always talking about, I want to lose weight, lose weight. You know what? Like anything else for success, find somebody that succeeded, find a system or a plan and then execute. Mm-hmm. You know, last week, my goal was to gain 10 pounds in muscle and body mass to get back to my original 180 instead of 150. And, you know, I just gained uh, nine. So I was close. Oh, good. So a couple of things I had to change. Uh, more eating. Salad is good, but I mean, it's time to go over salad now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to go into, you know, fast food, but I'm, I'm getting more in terms of the, the, the meat and potatoes like I used to, which I yeah. stopped for a long time, you know, but the important part is to realize, you know, and yeah, a lot of people laugh at that stuff yeah. and that's okay. Okay. Because they're always going to live the way they're living and maybe for them creativity or living day to day life is just existing is just okay. And that's okay. But if you want to change something, you know, a lot of people will think that failure you know, they're afraid of failure. Mm-hmm. If you look at the most successful people, I mean, seriously, <laughs> Donald Trump is president of the United States. Of America. Uh, <laughs> you know, he made it a hobby. And I remember when Clinton said, well, I'd love to read the chapters, but they all finish at chapter 11 or something. His <laughs> books, which was a joke, meaning bankruptcy. But he's smart. He said, I use this system for what it's for. You know, the laws are made for that. But here in Canada, mostly bankruptcy is seen as, you know, Mm-hmm. Whereas in the States, you just go and you start all over again and you just do it. Most people that are billionaire successful, they've had, you know, over and over a couple mm-hmm. of uh, bankruptcies. Uh, Richard Branson, you know, was close to it. Yep. And I'm not even sure if he did or not, but I think he was close to it. And then, you know, he started Virgin, uh, Virgin, um, Virgin Airlines. Exactly. So whether you fail or not is not that important. To change the word failure to feedback is what it's important. Okay, this is what I did. This is what gave me for result. That's not what I want for result. That's what I get. Mm-hmm. Right? I remember I got a property, this huge, 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 like 3,500 square foot. And I had, I think, furniture for the kitchen and for my room. <laughs> There's nothing there. I had to buy some more, right? And at one point, it's causing problems and it's difficult, I'm thinking. Okay, I had my dream. This was my adolescence dream of having a huge, huge house. You know, everybody wants a huge house. And at one point, I'm like, I don't like it here. Okay, I was allergic to dust. So in the walls, there was dust. I would spit mm-hmm. out blood sometimes in the morning. I'm like, this is enough. So I thought, I talked to my inner adolescent and I thought, okay, you got your dream now. Let's just leave it. Okay, I just want something else. And then boom, later on mm-hmm. afterwards, I changed. Okay, so it's very important to, to be aware of your inner world to create your outer world, okay? Manifestation just means to bring about, to bring into this world. Yep. But you have to have it in your mind first, and then you bring it, or you allow it in like you did a while ago, allow mm-hmm. it in. So everybody's just different, right? Yeah. The idea is to use courage, to be focused and determined on what you want precisely, because if you're not, you create what's called interference patterns, which means you won't get it because there's a, a hidden belief or a hidden thing that in the future, when you get there, you probably realize, you know, maybe it's a good thing. I didn't get this. Yeah. It's like, you know, no offense, but right now my first girlfriend, I wouldn't want to be with her right now mm-hmm. at my age. Okay. Very nice person. But at this time in my life, remembering, you know, how we were, yeah. you know, but at that time when we broke off was really, you know, uh, right. painful, very painful. But now you're like, okay, well, this is coming, you know. So to invite people to more to visualize, not visualize, but to sense the future, to align themselves to that future in which they do succeed. 
because they are called optimal futures. Mm. But if you're down and depressed and you know, you bitch about everything and you blame instead of taking responsibility, you're not going to get anywhere because you have to remember you got yourself in that position. Yeah. And you're going to manifest shit happening to you constantly. Okay. And now, you know, people will say, well, you know, what happens to children dying across the world and stuff like that? Well, you know, it raises awareness for certain things. You know, there's bad things happening all over the world. That's mm -hmm. very true. And, you know, I remember this little uh, child with the face on, uh, at the beach. I always remember that. It was on the front page of, and the photographer just took it during the refugees, right? But it created a, a, a level of awareness, just like right now in Florida, there's the shooting, right? Mm -hmm. So it's creating a whole new type of awareness and people are pushing more and more to make the change, right? Of course, there's people that are going to be against it, but you can see that there, there's more and more, quote, manifestations to be able to do something about it, uh, yeah. a rate, uh, an increase in awareness, okay? So in terms of your audience, the most important thing, like I said, visualize for the future. Dream, this is absolutely necessary because you use your sense of imagination. Yeah. Use your sense of balance, which means balance it out. If you think too bad, then bring it back up. If you mm -hmm. think it's not possible, ask yourself, why is this not possible? Yep. Okay. And then you go about it and use time as an assistant. Don't make it your slave because you're going to be its bitch. I guarantee you that. I <laughs> swear you're going to be its bitch. Okay. Why? Because time is older than you, first of all. <laughs> they don't care about you. It's true. Yeah. You have so to be patient. You work with it. Exactly. People call it patience, which means maybe you want to, you know, calm down a little bit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I've been working it. at this shit for almost seven years. Okay. Well, and now some people will give up, you know? Some I know. Say, well, you know, you've been there or you're at this age, it's too late for this. And I tell them, you know what? It's finger licking good, baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that the checks it. F it, man. I ain't taking that check. You yeah. Chicken. And this is a wonderful story. You know, there's plenty of people that are very rich and it took a longer amount of time for them to reach that. Okay? Mm -hmm. Ray Kroc from McDonald's as an example, you know, he didn't do it when he was 12 or 15. He did it when he was doing it. Yeah. So a lot of people will use their age, their That's nationality, serious. their, you know, whatever excuse. So yep. you can blame or you can recognize and then learn and get the tools. Maybe the resources you need are human resources, physical resources, uh, the there's always a way there's always a way exactly always a way okay the most important thing people look for when they're you know like elon musk when he hires somebody he wants to see how people handle problems why because he wants to know if they're resourceful and this is the way to do it if you don't know go ask somebody that does mm -hmm. very simple don't be afraid to ask questions exactly well thank you for the chat Law of attraction. Thank you for allowing me to be on the show and inviting me, actually. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's fun. That would be a, you know, a good one for people to listen to. Yeah. And um, so again, guys, follow him on Facebook. I'll attach that at the bottom and uh, links to his books and all his fun stuff so you can learn more about him. And then, hey, if you want a session with him, welcome. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> so thanks for listening. Share it, like it, leave a comment, and we'll see you on the next episode of the Candid Savage. Thank you.